It's a discovery that shakes our imagination of ancient Egypt to its core. Under the hot desert sun, experts unearthed a tomb complex that has the potential to change everything we think we know about this fascinating culture. While archaeologists and researchers have continually expanded our knowledge of the past, over the last few decades, what if what we know reflects only a tiny fraction of the truth? Arguably, one of the most intriguing revelations is the fact that the practice of mummification is much older than we have previously thought. But how old exactly? And what other insights can be derived from this circumstance? The search for the legendary labyrinth once described by Herodotus is no less exciting. Did the monumental complex that eclipsed even the magnificent pyramids really exist? Well, the stunning find that was made in Egypt a while back answers that question with a resounding yes. So let's open the gate to the past together and shed some light on the historical darkness. A Groundbreaking Find It's 2019 when researchers at the fabled necropolis of Saqqara make another sensational discovery. Accordingly, the archaeologists came across an ancient tomb complex in which Kui, a member of the royal family, was laid to rest. There was no question that the nobleman's corpse had been meticulously mummified, but the fact did not square with the estimated age of the body. Indeed, Kui lived during the first of three classical periods of ancient Egypt. This epoch was referred to as Old Kingdom and dates back from 2700 to 2200 BC. Before this stunning find, experts assumed that the practice of mummification would not flourish until 1,000 years later. Although the inhabitants of the Old Kingdom also tried to preserve the bodies of their deceased, they used much simpler methods, which were not always crowned with success. Thus, at the time, the remains were simply desiccated without removing the brain. The other internal organs were not always removed from the corpse either. Basically, it can be stated that the focus was more on the external appearance of the dead person. The use of resins in the mummies discovered so far from the Old Kingdom has also been found to be much less common. Not so in the case of Kui. The mummy was meticulously fitted with resins and textiles and gives a completely different impression than comparable discoveries from this period. In this way, the lifeless body was deprived of all moisture so that it would not easily decompose. From a religious point of view, preserving the corpse as lifelike as possible was of fundamental importance to the ancient Egyptians. And even then, this technique was to be applied so precisely and successfully that Kui's mortal remains have been preserved in amazingly good condition for over 4,000 years. However, the finding that ancient Egyptians mummified their dead 1,000 years earlier than previously thought also raises some questions. Where did the detailed knowledge of this process come from? Where did they get the materials they needed? And what can their origin tell us about the trade routes involved? We're excited to see if these exciting questions can be answered by further discoveries in the future. The Unknown Queen On November 4, 2022, the anniversary of the substantial find of Tutankhamun's tomb was repeated for the 100th time. However, a quick glance at the stunning discovery made by researchers in Saqqara a few weeks ago proves once again that countless rulers from days long past still lie hidden. Accordingly, the archaeologists in the world-famous City of the Dead came across almost 300 sarcophagi from the time of the New Kingdom in a previously unknown pyramid. But that's not all. In fact, the building was dedicated to a queen that the experts had never heard of before. What we do know is her name was Neith, but is not mentioned in any known historical record. Even if this find initially raises more questions than answers, the archaeologists are enthusiastic. Isn't it fascinating that we can literally rewrite history with discoveries like this? The main focus of the experts is now on decoding the unexplained background of the ruler. The dozens of coffins are still surrounded by some of the mysteries. Each sarcophagus has an individual face, which indicates the sex of the buried. Decorated with scenes from the sacred book of the dead, the coffins often depict the four sons of Horus, who were supposed to protect the organs of the deceased. While some sarcophagi have two lids, one even houses a solid gold mask. The Ancient Cheese Who does not know it? You discover a long-forgotten pack of cheese in the back of your fridge and wonder if you should take a risk and try it. 
Well, in case of the milk product that archaeologists found in the Egyptian tomb a few years ago, the question is irrelevant. It was already past its sell-by date 3,200 years ago. In detail, we are dealing with one of the oldest leftover cheeses of all time. Discovery in the Saqqara tomb of the eminent high priest Thames, protein analysis revealed that the ancient spreadable cheese was made from cow's milk and the milk of a goat or sheep. However, compared to its modern counterparts, ancient Egyptian cheese tasted significantly more sour. The Lost Maze No other ancient structure is as stunning as the colossal pyramids of Giza. These stone giants, whose background still poses enormous mysteries today, are generally regarded as the pinnacle of ancient Egyptian architecture. However, if we now look at an account of the historian Herodotus, we realize that there could be something slumbering in the hot desert sands that would make even the mightiest pyramid pale. While the ancient Greeks were visiting the kingdom of the pharaohs, he is said to have seen a building that left him absolutely speechless and in awe. However, historians still argue about whether the legendary labyrinth really existed. But we will return to this controversy in a moment. First, we should listen to the breathtaking words that Herodotus gave about the complex. Stunning Description I've seen it, and it's beyond words. If you put all the buildings in Greece together, they didn't put as much work and money into them as into this one labyrinth. It even surpasses the pyramids. We learn in detail that the huge complex contained 12 covered courtyards whose gates faced each other. Surrounded by a single continuous wall, the complex was partly underground and had a total of 3,000 chambers. According to Herodotus, it was possible to admire the above-ground part of the building with his own eyes, but he was not allowed to enter the underground rooms, as the sarcophagi of the kings and the coffins of the sacred crocodiles were located there. Nonetheless, Herodotus described the above ground as part of a superhuman masterpiece that lay at the foot of an ornate Great Pyramid. Furthermore, the labyrinth was located on the shore of a gigantic artificial lake, in the middle of which two pyramids were also enthroned. In view of this stunning description, a fundamental question arises. Did the legendary labyrinth actually exist? And if so, where are its remains slumbering? The Black Pyramid In 1888, Flinders Petrie uncovered a lead when he conducted the first major excavation at Hawara. In doing so, he and his companions came across a strikingly large foundation, which was 300 meters long and 245 meters wide. In addition, the corresponding area is adorned by the so-called Black Pyramid. This structure from the 19th century BC probably served the pharaoh Amenemhat III as a final resting place. The tomb of the king's daughter, Neferuptah, was also rediscovered here, and it is believed that the massive mortuary temple that originally stood next to this pyramid embodied the mysterious structure that Herodotus retrospectively referred to as the labyrinth. Clear Clues But what good are all these exciting assumptions if there was no solid archaeological evidence? Without corresponding finds, the legendary labyrinth will remain nothing more than a myth from the past. But how can it be that such a large and majestic facility simply disappeared from the scene? Well, regarding this, some experts have put forward a theory that the complex was destroyed during the reign of Ptolemy. He then had a nearby city of Shendit built to honor his wife, Arsinoe. In 2008, however, researchers finally made a sensational find under the hot desert sand. A scan of the base of Horara revealed some striking details that actually led to the urgent conclusion that a huge complex is slumbering under the surface. The mysterious thing, although the research results have been also confirmed by other teams, no professional excavation should be carried out to this day. This was despite the fact that the scan showed vertical walls several meters thick connected to a form of series of enclosed spaces. The question of whether these mysterious underground ruins are actually the labyrinth described by Herodotus therefore remains unanswered for the time being. Whether and when this historical secret will be revealed is still literally up in the air. Lost Golden City Aside from the impending discovery of the lost Egyptian labyrinth, 
If we turn back the wheel of time by around 3,400 years, we find ourselves in an epoch that still puzzles experts to this day. At that time, the pharaoh Akhenaten decided to give up his religion and the former capital in Thebes in order to found the city of Akhenaten and become the city's ruler. There, he ruled together with his wife Nefertiti and founded a mysterious sun cult. But what motives could have led the pharaoh to take such a drastic step? The answer to this riddle may be hidden in the ruins of the legendary Golden City, which were rediscovered in September 2020. In light of the astonishing good state of preservation in which the remains of the magnificent village were found, the entire professional world went into a frenzy upon the discovery. In fact, experts have called the discovery of the city ruins the biggest sensation since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. In detail, the Golden City was built during the reign of Akhenaten's father, Amenhotep III. That epic describes a chapter in which ancient Egypt was in a real heyday. This was a time of extraordinary luxury, wealth, and power. Although the investigation of the site is still in full swing, researchers have already unearthed some incredible artifacts. Jewelry, amulets, ceramics, and countless everyday objects give a foreshadowing of the priceless treasures that may yet lie in the remains of the Golden City. But the buildings also give us an authentic insight into everyday life at that time. According to this, the archaeologists have already found houses that may have once been occupied by workers, a kitchen, a bakery, administration buildings, and even a burial ground with burial chambers carved directly into the rock. After Akhenaten had turned his back on the flourishing town, for whatever reason, the Golden City later seemed to have been used again by Tutankhamun at some point during history. The subsequent ruler must have valued the city, which represented the prosperity of his empire so well. In fact, some findings suggest that the town was inhabited until the 7th century AD. The city was then left to its own devices for many centuries, before it recently saw the light of day again. Sensational Finds in Saqqara If we look at the everyday life of the ancient Egyptians, one central aspect must not be neglected – the pronounced burial cult of the inhabitants of the Pharaohic Kingdom. Hardly any other site is as representative as the ancient necropolis of Saqqara when it comes to gaining an authentic insight into the elaborate burial rites of important ancient Egyptian personalities. According to this, the famous UNESCO World Heritage Site houses, among other things, the oldest pyramid in the world, the Djoser Pyramid. Even today, new secrets are regularly savaged from the tombs of the necropolis. One of the most groundbreaking finds in recent history was the discovery of the tomb of a queen who died around 4,200 years ago. For a long time, however, experts could only speculate about the true identity of the ruler. But a few months ago, the breakthrough finally came. The researchers discovered the name of the queen carved on a wall of the mortuary temple. So we now know that this is Neat, the wife of the pharaoh Teti. The fact that the experts had never heard this name before reminds us of the importance of such discoveries in general history. No less spectacular was the recent find of 50 wooden sarcophagi and the discovery of a large limestone sarcophagus. Saqqara's archaeological treasures also include a mysterious papyrus scroll that explains in detail how the soul of a deceased person can reach the afterlife. Mysteries like this may never truly be solved, but experts are doing their best to bring these great questions of our past to a conclusion soon enough. Archaeologists are working flat out to uncover the secrets of the inhabitants of the pharaohs, which are still hidden. However, it happens that the experts occasionally come to a dead end in their search for clues. What's more, it sometimes seems as if some discoveries are being deliberately withheld from the interested public. Or have you actually heard of the Baca Pyramid? This unfinished masterpiece is one of the greatest mysteries ancient Egypt has to offer. What is the background of this building really about? What purpose should it have served? And above all, why was the gigantic construction project suddenly abandoned? Together with you, we're looking for answers today. Baca Pyramid whether it's the world-famous Pyramids of Giza, the mystical Sphinx, or the stunning temples of Abu Simbel, anyone who embarks on a trip to Egypt will have the chance to catch a glimpse of a bygone era.
However, things are a bit different in the case of the Baca Pyramid because this stone testimony does not actually appear in any popular tourist guide. Yet, in our modern day, we've known of the existence of this structure for 180 years. In the 1840s, the monument was to be awakened from its slumber in the ground and brought back to the surface. Even then, the German Egyptologist Karl Richard Lepsius recognized a pyramid in it. Since the enigmatic tomb was apparently never completed, it's also known as the Unfinished Pyramid of Saujet el Arjan. At the beginning of the 20th century, the structure was to be examined by the Italian researcher Alessandro Barsanti. Just like his French colleague Gaston Maspero, Maspero was deeply impressed by the discovered burial shaft. However, the turmoil of modern times does not take into account the ancient search for clues. Barsanti died in 1917, and the two world wars brought further research to a standstill for decades. It was only in 1954 that the Baca Pyramid was to be freed from the rubble and sand that had swallowed it up in the meantime. Particularly curious, this did not happen as part of a large-scale excavation, but for a film shoot. The producers were looking for an authentic location for the monumental film Land of the Pharaohs and finally found it in the region around Saujet el Arjan. However, anyone who hopes to be able to marvel at the unfinished structure with their own eyes these days should forget it. The Baca Pyramid is located in a military restricted zone, which is why archaeologists are forbidden from further investigating the structure. It's uncertain in what condition the facility is currently in, but according to some rumors, it's likely to be catastrophic. According to this, it's long been rumored among the local population that the necropolis has been built over by bungalows and barracks and is being misused as a garbage dump. The Unfinished Masterpiece the true ambition of this building project becomes clear to us when we take a look at the length of the sides of the Baca Pyramid, it's 200 meters. Since the mighty Cheops Pyramid also had an original base length of 230 meters, it's assumed that its unfinished counterpart would have reached comparable heights if it had ever been completed. In general, however, almost nothing is known about the background of the Baca Pyramid. It seems as if the project was stopped immediately after the foundation was worked out. The substructure of the tomb houses a T-shaped shaft. If you want to reach it, you have to climb a 100-meter-long steep stairway. However, this stepped path is interrupted halfway by a large ledge. Why this is so is still unknown. A found object indicates that so-called blocking stones were once intended to be placed here. The actual burial shaft is 27 meters long, 11.7 meters wide, and more than 20 meters deep. Although the inner walls of this passage were painstakingly polished, the researchers could not find a ceiling or wall paneling here. All that was completed was the covering of the floor. This is presented in the form of huge blocks of granite, the tops of which have also been polished. In detail, these massive components are 4.5 meters long and weigh around 9 tons. We have a natural helper to thank for the fact that we know today that the planned height of the burial chamber was a good 3 meters. After heavy rains, the falling masses of water were backed up to the same height mark since the walls had been smoothed and polished by then. The overlying water in turn seeped directly into the unhewn subsoil. In addition to the question about the sudden halt to construction, another question has remained unanswered to this day. Who was the Baca Pyramid supposed to be built in honor of? What mighty ruler was never laid to rest here? A look at the mysterious sarcophagus may help to get closer to the answer to this central question. Mysterious Sarcophagus Near the west end of the burial chamber, the experts came across a mysterious coffin. In detail, this sarcophagus had an oval shape and was incorporated directly into the floor. However, with a length of 3.15 meters and a width of 2.2 meters, the object was much too bulky to fit through the access route. 
As a result, it's reasonable to conclude that the sarcophagus was lowered down the shaft while the foundation was being laid. Immediately next to this huge coffin, its also oval-shaped lid could be found, which finished perfectly with the sarcophagus. According to Alessandro Barsanti, the tomb even contained a few artifacts that indicated burial. The inexplicable thing is that not only is there no trace of the objects in question these days, in fact, they should never be examined in detail. However, the Italian researcher stated that he had come across a small slate bearing the name of Rajadev. In fact, there are very few reliable sources about the life of this pharaoh. What is certain is that Rajadev was in power between the years 2580 and 2570 BC and was a son of Pharaoh Cheops. His father's mighty tomb was also completed during Rajadev's reign. Why the tablet that was discovered bore the name of this pharaoh of all things is uncertain. Rajadev actually built his own pyramid in Abu Roash. In truth, the scientific minds are still arguing about who should really be buried here. But what do the experts have to say about this? The Enigma About the Lord of the Grave Barsanti's statements are overshadowed by a mighty downer that cannot be proven from today's perspective. All we know is that no grave goods have been tracked down or officially described. Possibly, the discovered graffiti embodies a more tangible clue. Both within the burial shaft and in the surrounding area, the workers left numerous messages in red and black ink. Mainly, the names of the worker teams were immortalized here. The incomplete inscription, Star of the King, also indicates the name of the planned grave complex. The problem, since the graffiti does not contain a clear title, it's extremely complicated to correctly assign it to a pharaoh. It's not clear whether the king's name Nibkare, which means something like my lord is the Ka of Re, really referred to the original lord of the grave. In this exciting search for clues, the so-called cartouche names are considered particularly promising. In detail, it means the name of a ruler surrounded by an elongated oval line. Here too, the top the topic of the Ka is taken up. In ancient Egyptian belief, the Ka is a part of the soul that leaves the body of the dying and continues to exist on its own. However, since the copies that Barsanti made of the cartouche names at the time were anything but accurate, the symbols could still not be fully deciphered. With regard to the king's name, the experts are pursuing completely different interpretations. While some of the translation attempts read, his Ka is divine, his Ka is beautiful, or his Ka is power. The German Egyptologist Wolfhart Westendorf even recognized the depiction of a giraffe in the inscriptions. Magical abilities were attributed to long-necked, even-toed ungulates in ancient Egypt. Aside from Barsanti's slate claim, Rajadev's eldest son Baka is discussed as the intended grave lord. Since Baka died completely unexpectedly after his ascension to the throne, it could also be explained why the monumental building project was abandoned so suddenly. In addition, however, it's also conceivable that another son of Rajadev, namely Setka, represented the original lord of the grave. Possibly this fell out with his family, which is why he refused to be buried in Giza. The dating also proves to be incomparably problematic in view of the incomplete facts. Since no clear king's name was identified, the experts have to orientate themselves on the architectural style used. However, experts are divided as to whether construction began in the 4th or 3rd dynasty. As already mentioned, the site should not have been scientifically examined for many decades. But why did the Egyptian military decide to set up an exclusion zone here of all places? And why do the satellite images give the impression that the burial site had been systematically filled up over time? Although Barsanti suspected at the time that there were many more undiscovered cavities surrounding the complex, it's currently unclear when and if the site will again be the target of excavation work. Some people suspect that this has a staggering lore. The area would hide some inexplicable secrets that have thrown our conventional narrative into complete chaos. The Silver Pharaoh Aside from this peculiar unbuilt pyramid, there have been several other Egyptian discoveries that confuse scientists as well. As the third pharaoh of the 21st dynasty, 
Susenes I ruled between the years 1040 and 994 BC. During his reign, the king built magnificent temples dedicated to the gods Mut, Amun, and Kons. In 1940, the French archaeologist Pierre Monte managed to rediscover the tomb of the powerful ruler in Tanis. In addition to the king, his wife, a prince, and an important priest were laid to rest in it. In detail, after his death, Susenes I was not placed in just one, but in three sarcophagi. The first coffin was made of rose granite and originally belonged to Pharaoh Menephtah. Beneath it slumbered a black granite sarcophagus, also reused, that encased the object that eventually gave Susenes I his unofficial nickname, a coffin of pure silver adorned with precious gold ornaments. While the sarcophagi and the precious grave goods are still in amazing condition after all this time, the king mummy was not so lucky. It had already completely disintegrated by the time the tomb was opened. Bubastis Forget the hilarious cat videos circulating the internet these days. When it comes to the question of cat worship, no other people can match the ancient Egyptians. The city of Bubastis was considered the cult center of the goddess Bastet. Within mythology, the cat goddess was considered the daughter of the sun god Re. It should therefore come as no surprise that numerous bronze cat figures and even huge cat cemeteries have been found in the ruins of Bubastis. After their death, many cats were specially transported to Bubastis, mummified and buried in holy graves. Hatshepsut where is the mummy of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Hatshepsut? This exciting question remained unanswered for many decades, before the Egyptian minister of education Farouk Hosni announced an absolute world sensation in 2007. According to this, a team of experts managed to identify the queen's mummy using DNA analysis and a CT scan. In detail, it was a body that was found in the Valley of the Kings in the early 20th century. The detailed investigation revealed that Hatshepsut probably lived to be 35 and died of cancer or complications from diabetes. In the meantime, however, the identification has been questioned again. According to this, a single tooth, which is attributed to the queen, does not fit into the gap of the mummy's upper jaw. So it is that a widespread theory once again receives new fuel. The pharaoh was allegedly murdered for political reasons, and her body was then cleared out of the way. If you've thought that we've already unlocked all the secrets of this fascinating civilization, you're wrong. Again and again, archaeologists recover new artifacts from the hot desert sand, which bring back the past to life. From secret pyramid chambers, to mystical tombs, to long-lost metropolises, here are some discoveries from Egypt that will amaze us. Hidden Chamber It is the year 2017 when a real shock runs through the ranks of the experts. As a modern muron scan revealed, a secret chamber has been hiding in the mighty Cheops Pyramid the whole time. A look at the amazing dimensions show that this is by no means just a small niche. The mysterious cavity is at least 30 meters long. Located above the Great Gallery, the hidden chamber still poses many mysteries. In fact, we do not know what purpose this room once served, but according to the researchers, it is unlikely that there are mummies or valuable treasures here. We may be dealing here with the relic of a ramp on which the heavy blocks of stone were once heaved up. The true background of the discovery, however, resembles a mystery, and it will probably remain so indefinitely. According to this, the experts could not discover access to the secret chamber on their Muran scans, and simply pre-drilling into the cavity could affect the statics of the entire pyramid. Lost Golden City Aside from the impending discovery of the lost Egyptian labyrinth, if we turn back the wheel of time by around 3,400 years, we find ourselves in an epic that still puzzles experts to this day. At that time, the pharaoh Akhenaten decided to give up his religion and the former capital in Thebes in order to found the city of Akhenaten and become the city's ruler. There, he ruled together with his wife, Nefertiti, and founded a mysterious sun cult. But what motives could have led the pharaoh to take such a drastic step? 
The answer to this riddle may be hidden in the ruins of the legendary Golden City, which were rediscovered in September 2020. In light of the astonishing good state of preservation in which the remains of the magnificent village were found, the entire professional world went into a frenzy upon the discovery. In fact, experts have called the discovery of the city ruins the biggest sensation since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. In detail, the Golden City was built during the reign of Akhenaten's father, Amenhotep III. The epic describes a chapter in which ancient Egypt was in a real heyday. This was a time of extraordinary luxury, wealth, and power. Although the investigation of the site is still in full swing, researchers have already unearthed some incredible artifacts. Jewelry, amulets, ceramics, and countless everyday objects give a foreshadowing of the priceless treasures that may lie within the remains of the Golden City. But the buildings also give us an authentic insight into everyday life at the time. According to this, the archaeologists have already found homes that may have once been occupied by workers, a kitchen, a bakery, administration buildings, and even a burial ground with burial chambers carved directly into the rock. After Akhenaten had turned his back on the flourishing town, for whatever reason, the Golden City seemed to have been used again by Tutankhamun at some point during history. The subsequent ruler must have valued the city which represented the prosperity of his empire so well. In fact, some findings suggest that the town was inhabited until the 7th century AD. The city was then left to its own devices for many centuries, before it recently saw the light of day again. Khufu Ship The Cheops or Khufu Ship gives us a vivid insight into the death cult of the ancient Egyptians. According to the beliefs of the time, death was by no means the end. It was merely the beginning of the mystical journey that, in the best case, would lead to the attainment of the kingdom of heaven. In order for the deceased to be able to reach the afterlife, a wide variety of accessories and tools were placed in the grave. This also includes the world-famous Kiop ship, a so-called sun bark, which is one of the best preserved ships of antiquity. However, when archaeologists rediscovered the ship in 1954 in a sealed pit in Giza, it had been dismantled into all of its individual parts. However, this was not a random heap of rubble. The more than 1,200 individual parts were arranged in a logical order that made it possible to later put the ancient object back together perfectly. Some traces indicate that the boat was actually used for shipping. Possibly, this was done to transport the body of Cheops from Memphis to Giza. In addition, it is conceivable that the powerful pharaoh used the ship during his lifetime to head for sacred places. Particularly interesting, if the Cheops ship were launched today, it would still be fully functional. Opry's Stone The archaeologists invest vast amounts of time and money in their exciting search for clues, and it could be so much easier. According to this, a simple farmer showed last year how quickly things can go. When the farmer in northeast Egypt was busy preparing his land for sowing, he unexpectedly came across an artistically worked sandstone slab, which later turned out to be an artifact from the time of Pharaoh Apries. Accordingly, the 2.3 meter high and a good 1 meter wide stele was made approximately 2,600 years ago. In detail, the object adorned with 15 lines of hieroglyphs, which the experts are now trying to translate. Rosetta Stone It is July 15, 1799, when a French officer manages to recover an ancient artifact in the Nile Delta. According to one story, however, it wasn't the military commander who tracked down the landmark object, but his horse. This had stumbled over the structure because it was half sticking out of the ground. Whatever the case, it is clear that we owe a lot to the so-called Rosetta Stone. As part of an inscribed tablet, the find made a significant contribution to the decoding of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. This is mainly due to the fact that the text is available in three different versions, in hieroglyphs, in Demotic script, and in Greek. In detail, the tablet was made in such a way that it could be deciphered by three population groups. The hieroglyphs were aimed at the priests, 
the Demotic script at the officials and the Greek letters at the foreign rulers of the time. If you like, the Rosetta Stone served as kind of a royal homage. The texts tell of all the great deeds accomplished by Pharaoh Ptolemy V. The Silver Pharaoh as the third pharaoh of the 21st dynasty, Sisens, I ruled between the years of 1040 and 994 BC. During his reign, the king built magnificent temples dedicated to the gods Mut, Amun, and Krones. In 1940, the French archaeologist Pierre Monte managed to rediscover the tomb of the powerful ruler in Tanis. In addition to the king, his wife, a prince, and an important priest were laid to rest in it. In detail, after his death, Sisens, I was not placed in just one, but in three sarcophagi. The first coffin was made of rose granite and originally belonged to Pharaoh Manepta. Beneath it slumbered a black granite sarcophagus, also reused, that encased the object that eventually gave Sisens his official nickname, a coffin of pure silver adorned with precious gold ornaments. While the sarcophagi and precious grave goods are still in amazing condition after all this time, the king mummy was not so lucky. It had already been completely disintegrated by the time the tomb was opened. Unfinished Obelisk To get closer to this exciting mystery, it is worth taking a closer look at some of the ancient structures. First of all, let's take a look at the famous unfinished obelisk located in Aswan near the Sudanese border. Historians suspect that it was ruler Hatshepsut who approved the construction of the magnificent stone pillar. If the object had been completed, it would have become the largest obelisk of antiquity with a height of almost 42 meters and a weight of around 1170 tons. In the end, Two urgent questions arise. Which tools were used by the Egyptians to shape the massive stone monument? And how were the workers going to manage to erect the structure, which weighed several tons? The majority of archaeologists believe that round dolerite hammers were the most important tools of that time. Basically, in order to beat a material into shape, it is always advisable to use a tool that is harder than the object that is being processed. In the case of rose granite, of which the unfinished obelisk is made, this is not the case. In fact, both materials are roughly the same hardness. Bronze, the other tool used in ancient Egypt, is in turn significantly softer than rose granite. Another point that puzzles some experts is the small area of the trench in which the obelisk was machined. There was very little space there to perform hard machine strokes. Therefore, some researchers are sure that the ancient workplace provides an authentic impression of which methods could not be used for processing. Conversely, it also gives an indication of the unique technical level of Egyptian architecture, which, however, eludes our understanding. To this day, we have never determined how much a remarkable piece of artwork was created. By all means, the tools to craft such a perfect specimen simply didn't exist at that time. Hatshepsut's Tomb Where is the mummy of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Hatshepsut? The exciting question remained unanswered for decades before the Egyptian Minister of Education, Farouk Hosne, announced an absolute world sensation in 2007. According to this, a team of experts managed to identify the queen's mummy using DNA analysis and a CT scan. In detail, it was a body that was found in the Valley of the Kings in the early 20th century. The detailed investigation revealed that Hatshepsut probably lived to be 35 and died of cancer or complications from diabetes. In the meantime, however, the identification has been questioned again. According to this, a single tooth which is attributed to the queen does not fit into the gap in the mummy's upper jaw, so it was that a widespread theory once again receives new fuel. The pharaoh was allegedly murdered for political reasons, and her body was then cleared out of the way. Electromagnetic Energy A few years ago, researchers announced a real sensation. Electromagnetic energy can be generated inside and below Cheops Pyramid. In our modern, everyday life, electromagnetic fields are a constant companion. 
It doesn't matter whether we're using our mobile phones, using a microwave, or sunbathing. The invisible energy surrounds us practically everywhere. Using a theoretical model, the experts calculated that using the electromagnetic fields can be concentrated under the ground and inside the Great Pyramid. However, it should be mentioned that this is a purely theoretical study that requires certain assumptions. This indeed, among other things, that the structure does not hide any other unknown cavities and that the building material is distributed in the same way everywhere. Extraterrestrial Jewelry The fact that iron jewelry was found in the ancient Egyptian tomb does not sound like a sensation at first. However, the discovery is made all the more exciting when we realize that the material used was literally not from this world. A scientific study proved that the iron in the pearls was extracted from a meteorite. In our days, iron is considered a rather practical, not particularly valuable material. In ancient Egypt, however, the metal was more valuable than gold and precious stones. For a long time, the inhabitants of the pharaohs were unable to smelt iron. The rare cases when the material fell from heaven to earth like a gift from the gods were all the more significant. Bubastis Forget the hilarious cat videos circulating the internet these days. When it comes to the question of cat worship, no other people can match the ancient Egyptians. The city of Bubastis was considered the cult center for the goddess Bastet. Within mythology, the cat goddess was considered the daughter of the sun god Ra. It should therefore come as no surprise that numerous bronze cat figures and even large cat cemeteries have been found in the ruins of Bubastis. After their death, many cats were specially transported to Bubastis, mummified and buried in holy graves. Sensational Discovery in Turkey The unexpected often happens. When the Turkish authorities began a restoration project to preserve historic houses and streets in the old town of Midyat in 2020, they had no idea what a breathtaking discovery this work would lead to. Ultimately, fate decreed that meanwhile an inconspicuous cave opened up which quickly turned out to be the gateway to a full-fledged city underground. Of course, those responsible did not hesitate and immediately initiated extensive excavation work. In the course of this, the archaeologists came across a gigantic network of corridors that had everything that everyday life required at the time. Accordingly, in addition to water, wells, and silos, there were also places of worship and countless artifacts from the 2nd and 3rd centuries. Dubbed the Matiate, the hidden site is believed to have been in use for a period of 1900 years and home to at least 70,000 people. Even within the region, where many similar underground structures had already been discovered, Matiate stands out for its impressive dimensions. It is very likely that the hidden city was being built by Christians who were being persecuted by the Romans. The future will show which secrets are still slumbering beneath the surface. So far, only about 3% of Matiate has been uncovered. Darren Kuyu What prompted people hundreds of years ago to build a full-fledged city underground? This is exactly the question that experts have been asking since Darren Kuyu was accidentally discovered in 1963. That mysterious underground place, which is located in the small Turkish town of the same name, has not yet been fully unraveled. So far, eight floors of the underground city have been uncovered, covering a total area of 2,500 square meters. While the upper floors were probably primarily used for living and sleeping quarters, the complex also contained a monastery, meeting rooms, storage areas, and even a dungeon. Other rooms functioned as churches, which were used by the residents for underground church services. But who were these residents? Some researchers suspect that Darren Kuyu was once built by Christians to protect them from persecutors. In fact, it is now considered certain that the complex was used by Christian residents between the 6th and 10th centuries and brought into its present form. But were they also the creators of Darren Kuyu? Quite a few experts believe that the history of the city goes back much further. So it is conceivable that it was the Hittites who built the underground settlement more than 4,000 years ago. However, not only the history of its origins, but also the question of the number of inhabitants repeatedly causes heated debates in the ranks of experts. While one side assumes that a maximum of 3,000 people live there at the same time, others put the number of residents at 50,000. No less exciting than the discovery of Darren Kuyu, 
was the realization that was by no means an isolated case. So far, more than 30 other underground cities have been found in the surrounding region. Salzbergwerk Welitska Also known as the Underground Salt Cathedral, Welitska Salt Mine in Poland was built in the mid-13th century. After the natural deposit of rock salt was traced, people began to expand the trove into a massive complex, reaching a depth of 340 meters, made up of a maze of countless galleries and tunnels. When not hunting for the white gold, workers used the Walitska salt mine to amass an impressive collection of chandeliers, statues, and works of art, including a faithful recreation of da Vinci's The Last Supper. The mine has served as a major tourist and spa destination since salt mining ceased in the early 1990s. For example, people with respiratory diseases can go to a healing gallery for treatment. Some rooms in the mine can even be rented for festive events. Nowers The so-called basement of Nowers is located near the eponymous French municipality and was probably built in the 9th century to protect against the invading Normans. After the site, located 30 meters below the surface, was later intensively used again during the Wars of Religion and the Thirty Years' War, it fell into oblivion in the following centuries. The fact that we know about the Norse basements today is thanks to the parish priest Abbe Ernest Danencourt, who rediscovered the site in 1887. In fact, the underground city would be visited again by British and Canadian soldiers during the First World War. Among other things, it served as a military hospital. During the Second World War, first British and later German troops found their way here, with Norse first serving as an ammunition depot, and from 1943 as a military base. With a total length of around 2 kilometers, Norse has over 300 chambers, including several chapels, a bakery, stables, storage rooms, and now even a small museum. Lalibela if a city is already referred to as New Jerusalem, the background of the plant is immediately obvious. In the 12th and 13th centuries, the eponymous Emperor Lalibela commissioned the construction of 11 churches. However, the unique feature was that the places of worship were not built in the conventional way, but colloquially built from top to bottom. In detail, the churches were carved differently out of the surrounding rock formation, which makes it appear as if the buildings practically sprout out of the ground. Particularly famous is the cruciform church, Bet Georgis, which is hidden in a 30-meter deep ditch. In fact, the rock churches of Lalabella still serve their original purpose and are visited by numerous pilgrims every year. Orvieto The Italian hill town of Orvieto is best known for its picturesque architecture and fine wines. However, the greatest wonders of this town are invisible at first sight. They slumber well hidden under the earth. Peppered with countless artificial caves and tunnels, the hidden buildings tell a centuries-old story, from the Etruscan through the medieval to the Renaissance era. The various users have created around 1,200 chambers over time. Again, the purposes that the underground city served varied widely. While the Etruscans built cisterns and aqueducts here, the medieval people preferred to press olives as well as breed pigeons and horses here. The palaces of the nobles, in turn, had secret routes of communication with the lower town, so if Orvieto was besieged, they could make a beeline for themselves. Petra Ever since her appearance in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the ancient caravan city of Petra has been known to the general public. While the corresponding region in Jordan had been inhabited since 9000 BC, the capital of the Nabataean Empire experienced its heyday in the 1st century BC. The imposing funerary temples, whose decades were carved directly into the surrounding rock, earned Petra a place in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1985. The first archaeological excavations were again carried out in 1929 and are still in full swing. In 2011, for example, researchers managed to track down a luxurious bathing complex that probably once belonged to a royal residence. According to current estimates, only 20% of the ancient ruined city has been uncovered so far. Underground City while the facilities prevented so far look back on centuries-old turbulent histories, the case of the underground city of Beijing is somewhat different. 
As the situation between the People's Republic of China and the Soviet Union became increasingly tense, Mao Zedong expected the worst a nuclear war. So it was that the Chinese revolutionary commissioned the construction of the protective system in 1969. Ten years later, the bunker complex was completed, but fortunately, the feared nuclear strikes did not materialize. With an impressive size of 85 square kilometers, 6 million people could have found refuge here if the worst came to worst. Originally accessible via 90 entrances, survival would be ensured with the help of 70 deep wells and more than 2,000 ventilation shafts. But although the emergency should never occur, the underground city still serves as a permanent home for about 1 million inhabitants. Over time, numerous residential areas, schools, shops, theaters, restaurants and kindergartens were built here. Burlington Bunker As with Beijing's underground city, Britain's Burlington Bunker was built out of fear of enemy nuclear attack. However, this facility was not used to accommodate the broad masses. In an emergency, it would only have been reserved for high-ranking members of the government. Located below the village of Korsham, the bunker built in the 1950s covers 35 hectares. It had offices, dining rooms, a switchboard, dormitories, and medical facilities. In other words, everything it would have taken to keep the British Prime Minister and around 4,000 government employees alive. In fact, it even had its own BBC studio, which the minister could have used to address the public. Although the Burlington Bunker was never actually used, it remained operational until 2004. A Paris Theater or Speakeasy In 2004, police from Paris found a functional cinema underground in a cavern that had never previously been discovered or charted. Officers became aware of the cinema during a training exercise that was taking place underground near the Eiffel Tower. The cave was estimated to have been around 400 square meters and had been transformed into what they called an underground amphitheater, presumably for seating, and had been cut into solid rock. They also found a full-size movie screen, projection machines, and several films from the 1950s. Next door to the theater, police found another room that appeared to have been used as a bar or restaurant. Several phone lines had to be run to the area and an electrical system had been professionally installed. Police later returned to the area to investigate further, but they found that all the electrical lines had been cut and the phone lines had been removed. A note was left in the middle of the room stating, do not try to find us. Police are still unsure who is responsible for the rooms, but it appears as though a group of shady individuals had been operating a speakeasy. The Dead Sea Scrolls For anyone who is even remotely religious or has a religious friend or relative, you have likely heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls contain an important portion of ancient Jewish manuscripts that were found in a series of caves in the Judean desert, a short distance away from the Dead Sea. Most of the texts contained within the scrolls have incredible significance in modern religion, predominantly Christianity and Judaism. They are estimated to have been written between 408 BC and 318 AD. They contain over 225 copies of many Hebrew biblical books, including fragments of Genesis, Exodus, Isaiah, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Judges, and many other Old Testament religious texts. Most of the scrolls are said to contain every book of the Hebrew Bible, excluding Esther and Nehemiah. These are estimated to be the oldest surviving documents from the original Hebrew Bible, being over 1,200 years older than the previous discovered documents. The scrolls were found in 1947 when a group of men who were herding goats entered an underground cave near the Dead Sea. Inside the cave, they found several clay jars that were filled with leather scrolls. Over the next decade, researchers found 10 more caves that each contained several more sets of scrolls, which had tens of thousands of excerpts from the Hebrew Bible. In all, researchers discovered a total of 900 scrolls, with many of the discoveries being made by men who had been herding the aforementioned goats. The sheer luck of these individuals, who found such important documents while taking an afternoon stroll, is unreal. A few goat farmers managed to change the course of history without even knowing it. The discovery of these scrolls neither proved or disproved their religious claims, but they did reveal that there were several different versions of the Hebrew Bible in circulation at the time. 
While all of the books told the same message as the books that had been widely published across the world, there were a few differences that scholars spotted, though they were all rather insignificant. The differences have likely led to many critiques of the modern Bible, in which some individuals believe several contradictions ultimately to disprove the Bible's message. While this has never been officially proven or widely accepted, it certainly explains how these books have been slightly altered over the years and why some translations are less reliable than others. This discovery shed light on some of the mysteries that surround the Hebrew Bible, and many of the texts from these scrolls have been added to the Bibles you can buy at your local bookstore today. Tracked down at the edge of an ancient lake in White Sands National Park in New Mexico, we are looking at a series of human footprints. And although they look like they were recently pressed into the ground, radiocarbon dating of the seeds of an aquatic plant showed that the prints are actually 21,000 to 23,000 years old. The problem, this is a period in which humans could not have reached North America at all. The path was blocked by massive ice sheets at the time. Against this background, another exciting conclusion emerges the first settlers must have arrived in the region much earlier. Before the 61 silent witnesses were discovered, experts believed that man first set foot on the American continent 13,000 years ago. In view of the scarcity of information, however, the question of the exact date of the first immigration remains controversial. This tunnel leads to Cleopatra's tomb. She is considered one of the most beautiful women of all time, who turned the heads of the most powerful men. And as befits a true heartbreaker, Cleopatra has been gasling mankind for almost 2,000 years, because no one knows where the last pharaoh's tomb is hidden. But this could soon be a thing of the past, because archaeologist Kathleen Martinez is certain that the tunnel under the Tapasiris Magna Temple leads straight to the lost tomb. Located 13 meters below the temple, several coins showing the likeness of the famous ruler have already been found in the underground passage and it is possible that the researchers will not only find Cleopatra's remains here, but also those of her lover Marcus Antonius. However, there are also skeptical voices. Egyptian pharaohs were not usually buried in temples or tunnels. Homo naledi was 100,000 years ahead of us. How did the fossils of Homo naledi end up in the inaccessible Rising Star Cave in South Africa? Did the representatives of this species of the genus Homo die here? Or were their lifeless bodies deliberately deposited here, and thus buried? Paleoanthropologist Lee Berger is a strong advocate of the latter theory. He and his team have extensively investigated the Rising Star Cave and brought the previously unknown species to light in the first place. In addition to the remote location in which the fossils were found, Berger believes that two other circumstances speak in favor of the burial theory. On the one hand, the skeletons have no bite marks from wild animals. They are practically intact and were apparently laid down carefully. On the other hand, and this is even more exciting, one individual was probably accompanied by a stone tool, so Homo naledi may even have believed in life after death. The tomb of Jesus has been opened. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem claims to stand on the very spot where Jesus Christ was once buried. A resurrected Messiah, and 2,000 years later, Jesus' tomb was to be reopened for the first time in centuries and reveal something that turned the researcher's worldview upside down. Until then, experts had believed that the world-famous burial chapel was built in the 12th century. Well, you can be that wrong. Analysis of the building material showed that the church was built around the year 345. As part of extensive restoration work, researchers from the Technical University of Athens had removed the marble slab on the Holy Sepulchre of Christ, whereupon, surprisingly, a second slab came to light. A chemical analysis of the mortar used ultimately provided the new dating. Did Jesus have a brother? Sometimes a single sentence is enough to spark a heated debate. Jacob, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. This inscription adorns the so-called Jacob's ossuary, a limestone bone box that was allegedly discovered some time ago in the Tel Aviv Antiquities Collection. However, the controversial history of the artifact's discovery is said to go back even further. It is said that it was once discovered by grave robbers in Jerusalem and turned up in the antiquities trade in the 70s. After the object was made public, 
It was checked for authenticity by a team of experts. The experts came to the conclusion that the ossuary inscription had been added later, so we are dealing with a forgery here. However, this assessment has been seriously questioned by other scientists. Some hair-raising mistakes were made during the investigation, and this one inscription is no different from the others that are considered authentic. Ever seen a baby Buddha? Generally speaking, we tend to locate Buddhism in East Asia. So what is a centuries-old Buddha statue doing in Australia of all places? What's more, why was it depicted as an infant? Shane Thompson and Leon Deschamps were astonished when they discovered the small bronze figure in Shark Bay, in the west of Down Under. Unable to explain the unusual location of the artifact, they took the baby Buddha to an expert. He confirmed that this was indeed an authentic relic from the Ming Dynasty. While he estimated that the object had been buried for at least 100 years, he was unable to provide a clear answer to the question of how it came to Australia. Probably the most exciting explanation is that it was carried on the Ming treasure voyage of 1421, when the Chinese emperor sent the explorer Zheng He out into the wide world. However, this would also mean that the Chinese visited the region almost 200 years before the Dutchman Dirk Hartog. Does this medallion show a UFO? The ancient Egyptians have long been suspected in certain circles of having been in league with extraterrestrial beings. While the aliens revealed hidden knowledge and futuristic technologies to the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Empire, they were worshipped as supernatural deities in return. But that's not all. Some aliens are said to have taken the throne themselves and ruled the people as pharaohs. This would apply in particular to Akhenaten, who was always depicted with a strikingly long, strangely deformed skull. No less strange is the medallion that the king once possessed. This is adorned with a strange object that some observers interpret as an extraterrestrial spaceship. The new chamber is just the beginning. In view of the fact that the gigantic Pyramid of Khufu has adorned the Giza Plateau for 4,500 years, one might think that the structure has now been fully deciphered. But the exact opposite is the case. Most of the stone giant is still unknown to us. The latest sensational discovery does nothing to change this. At the beginning of this year, researchers discovered a new chamber here, over two meters high and nine meters long. However, experts believe that only 10% of the Great Pyramid has been explored. Nobody can say at present what exciting secrets lie dormant in the remaining 90%. How old is the pyramid really? Did your pulse just jump when you heard the 4,500 years claim? Yes, we also know that the official age dating of the Pyramid of Khufu is sometimes heavily disputed, and the results of a recent analysis don't really help to put people's minds at rest. We remember, all that has been found in the Great Pyramid so far was a granite ball, a copper hook, and some fragments of cedar wood. Most bizarrely, the wood was thought to have been lost for decades as it was stored in the wrong section of Aberdeen University Museum. In 2020, however, it was rediscovered and scientifically examined, with the result that it is 500 years older than the pyramid. The researcher's vague explanation is that the Egyptians probably reused the wood for half a millennium because it was so valuable. This skull does not match the evolution of humans. How do you deal with fossils that simply don't fit the evolutionary history of humans? Once discovered near the Chinese city of Harbin, the enigmatic ancient skull raises precisely this question. The current state of research only indicates that we are dealing with a previously unknown species of human, Homo longi, or Dragon Man. Strangely enough, the fossil exhibits both prehistoric and modern characteristics. The place of Homo longi in the human family tree is still completely uncertain. Have we misidentified the species? From one skull mystery to the next, the 1.85 million year old fossils excavated in Georgia show that representatives of the Homo genus reached Eurasia 300,000 years earlier than assumed. However, one find differs markedly from all the others. The unusually well-preserved Skull 5 which has some special features that have not yet been seen in any other Homo fossil. This refers in particular to the small internal volume of the skull, in combination with a widely protruding snout and large teeth. This strange circumstance led scientists to assume that the species Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis 
were in fact both Homo erectus, a theory that is still being debated. The gate that leads to the gods. A few years ago, local tour guide Jose Mamani made an astonishing discovery near Lake Titicaca in Peru. Someone had carved a large mysterious stone gateway into the side of Mount Hayumarca. Christened Aramumuru, the most exciting myths and legends have since grown up about the construction of the mystical gateway and its use. Over the past 4,000 years, the region has been home to a number of indigenous communities, including the legendary Inca civilization. The Incas believed that Lake Titicaca was the birthplace of the world and that the spirits of the dead return there. Aramu Muru is believed to have served as a place of pilgrimage and worship for the Incas, but that's not all. While fleeing from the Spanish, an Inca priest is said to have once placed a golden disc in front of the gate. It then opened, the priest walked through, and was never seen again. The oldest traces of pre-humans. 6.05 million years ago, an individual walked across what is now the island of Crete, which was still connected to the mainland at the time, and left modern science with an absolute sensation. In fact, these are by far the oldest known traces of a pre-human. They are another 2.5 million years older than the footprints left by Australopithecus afarensis lucy in Tanzania. At the same time, the newly discovered tracks also reveal a lot about the anatomy of their creator. It had a close-fitting, robust big toe and shortening side toes. Compared to Lucy, the sole of the foot was shorter and the heel narrower. Sensational find or fake? Once discovered in the Transylvania region of Romania, the clay tablets of Tartaria are decorated with so-called Vinca signs. This is a deviation of the Danube writing system, which is attributed to the Vinca culture that gave it its name. The age of the artifacts is estimated at around 7,500 years. Assuming we are really dealing with artifacts and not fakes, the fake theory was put forward by Erika Kasim, but it has received little support and is dismissed as unfounded by most researchers. The pre-Columbian Ten Commandments, the so-called Decalogue Stone has a problem because it shouldn't actually exist in this form. Because while the boulder contains a shortened version of the Ten Commandments in ancient Hebrew script, it is located near Las Lunas in the U.S. state of New Mexico. Some experts argue that the inscription is genuine and actually dates back to ancient times, but others believe it is a modern hoax. Press subscribe and never miss an exciting video again.